Hey everybody, um, I'm here today with a, a good friend of mine, uh, Sergeant Dan Smith. I'm honored to have you come and share with us today and, and hear a little bit about your story and your experience and, and uh, what you're doing today. So if you don't mind, if I'd like to start off in prayer. Sure. Okay. So Lord, thank you so much, God, for uh, this time and our conversation, God. I just ask you just to bless it and just to watch anybody who watches this and listens to this podcast, uh, that they take something from this and it just uh, helps them learn more about homelessness and what we do on the streets, God. So thank you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, Dan, <laughs> I guess, um, so where were, you, where, were you, where were you from, born and raised? Well, I'm born in Arizona and grew up a little bit in Southern California, but spent most of my early teens and early adult life in uh, San Mateo and Foster City. San Mateo and Foster City. Mm -hmm. uh, decent home, mom, dad, all that? Um, no, my mom passed away when I was five. Um, I'm the oldest of four boys. My youngest brother was uh, two weeks when she passed. We were living in Los Angeles. Uh, my dad was 26 years old at the time with four boys. Wow. So, uh, we all got farmed out to family members in California and Arizona, and I uh, spent some years with my aunt and uncle here in Los Altos. He was uh, stationed out of Moffitt in the Vietnam War at the time, so I kind of just kind of raised by my mother's sister. And then uh, in 1970, my father moved up to Foster City, and we all reunited. And then his mother, my grandmother, came to live with us to, to raise us again yeah. <laughs> as a, for a mother. Cool. And that's kind of how... I, how my life went. That's awesome. And your dad was in the Vietnam War? No, no. He was uh, actually occupational forces, World War II. He was an army. He was a soldier. Wow. But uh, no, he was, uh, no, he wasn't in Vietnam. My uncle was. Your uncle was. My, yeah. And then you went to school here in Redwood City? No, I'm a bunch of schools, uh, Foster City schools. And then um, I had some uh, young youth issues as a young man or a young teenager. So I was sent away to a boys boarding school down in uh, Los Olivos, California, Dunn School. And um, they got me on track and I, I did well. And I got, I guess, back on track because they took me out of there. And then I ended up going to Sarah High School in San Mateo. Oh, awesome. So, oh, okay. I, so I graduated to Sarah in So you're a good Catholic boy. Um, yeah, they raised me Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And so after you graduated from high school, where did you go from there? Um, I went to CSM for a couple of years and I kind of goofed off and um, I worked and partied and kind of ran amok yeah. and um, couldn't get my act together and I ended up joining the Marine Corps. Wow. In 1980, I joined the Marines. And that, and that got, you got, got your attention? Well, the Marine Corps doesn't mess around. You, you, you got to buy into it. So I was in the Marines for four years. I spent almost all that time overseas, uh, which was a great experience. I came back. Uh, I was honorably discharged. Actually, I was honorably discharged. I lived overseas for a while in the Sudan and East Africa. Then I came back and I went back to school again, College of San Mateo. And uh, the joke is um, the second time through, they took my grades second time through and averaged them in for the first time. And I got suspended for academic probation, which shows you how bad my grades were the first time through. Anyway, I took, took care of all that, got, my, uh, got through CSM and I ended up going over to UC Berkeley where I graduated um, with a Bachelor of Arts degree in American history. Cool. So, um, but how old were you when you made the decision and to go towards the uh, Redwood City Police Department? So, um, well, I was in my late twenties, and I was uh, I worked at the San Mateo County Fairgrounds and Exposition Center, r running the weekend events while I went to college. And I, actually, I'm a history major, so I was a semester away from my teaching credential. I was going to be a. I always fancied I'd be like an eighth grade teacher, is what I thought I'd be, and. Um, Working at the fairgrounds, I dealt with a lot of San Mateo police officers, and they started kind of recruiting me, saying, hey, you should work for San Mateo police, and I thought that was exciting, but I didn't know anything about it. And they said, well, start testing around, and when you, you'll understand how to take the tests, there's a written and there's an oral, and you know, when San Mateo's ready to hire, you'll be, you'll be ready to go. You'll understand how to take the test. So one of the first tests I took was the Road City Police Department, and um, they hired me. <laughs> So I ended up being a Redwood City police officer, and that was 29 years ago. Wow, that's awesome. So what, what's it, I mean, just to give people an idea, what's it like to, what's the life like being a police officer? I mean, I know there's a lot of good, a lot of, a lot of crazy, a lot of bad, you know, stressful, whatever. A lot of well, um, so, well, when I started in Redwood City, there was probably about 
I don't know, 15 of us plus that lived and worked in Redwood City. And um, I, to me, I, I love it. I, uh, it was a, it's the best job I ever had. I loved going to work. I still love going to work. Mm. Um, I, you know, there's good days and bad days, but it was, um, I love my job. I think yeah. it was, I have no regrets any about it. Just actually, maybe I should have started sooner, but you know, who's to say that I, <laughs> how that would have worked out. But no, um, I loved being a Redwood City police officer. I loved working in Redwood City. Um, I had a lot of, I was, I completely, I clearly bought into the community policing philosophy. Um, you know, people knew where I lived. They knew a police officer lived in that house. People would come to my house to sign off tickets, to complain, to report a call. And you know, that's just, that's what you do. I was the neighborhood cop and um, I had no problem with that. I, you know, it was just the way it was. That's really and, cool. And that's I, awesome. And I enjoyed it. I yeah, really enjoyed being a police officer. People in your neighborhood felt safe too, I'm sure. Um, nobody ever told me that, but I get the sense. You know, I lived by a park and, um, you know, they, they wouldn't call the cops. They'd call me if there was a disturbance yeah. in the park or something, <laughs> which, and then I'd call the cops um, <laughs> or something. Funny. But um, stuff like that. But no, there was nothing, uh, no, re no regrets on it. Being police, living in town. It was all a good experience. Yeah. So like, 29 years at Redwood City Police. You're, you're like me. I'm 51. I've lived in Redwood City all my life. You've seen Redwood City go through a lot of changes. Remember when Redwood City was Deadwood City? Yeah. And now well, look at it. Yeah. Well, oh, huge change. Well, my dad was city manager here before I was a police officer. So I've been coming here as a kid. Even though I was in San Mateo, we would come here. The old drive-in, Pete's Harbor, the yeah. creek at Red Morton Park that you could catch frogs in and just yep. so 49ers you know we used to go see the yep, right up the street here. yep yep so um yeah big changes in redwood city but um you know the joke is i didn't understand as a kid but as police officers we kind of joke you know all roads lead to redwood city it's a diverse town you know growing up in foster city was kind of vanilla which was i guess okay for kids you could go out and sail in the lagoon or something but redwood city covered everything all all aspects of life yeah i was um about uh, five years ago, six years ago, I was on, my, on a ride along with Bill Cogno. Mm -hmm. And the first words out of his mouth was, all roads lead through Redwood City. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard that before. And then, you know, I've been dealing with the homeless mm -hmm. for 13 years and really been hitting it hard in Redwood City working here. And I realized, like, he was no joke. It's like, everybody, all the transients come through Redwood City. I might not stay, but some do. But I end up seeing so many faces that come through here. It's it's incredible. Well, there's a reason for that. We're the county seat. And as a result of being the county seat, there are so many social services here. Mm -hmm. and it, well, in addition to the social services, there's the county jail, the county court system. Back in the day, there was a methadone clinic here, a Western Union. The Sam Trans station on Brewster used to be a Greyhound. So people get off the Greyhound from all over and come here. Um, as I said, the jail system's here, probation's here, parole's here, mental health is here. Yeah. Um, Redwood City has more board and care homes and, yeah. and homeless shelters than any city in San Mateo County. Yeah. And, as a, and there you have it. So Redwood City's not a bad place. We, we're a busy place, a busy police department, but that's because of all those things. Yeah. But, so you said something a few minutes ago that I kind of want to hit on because that's kind of like how I met you. I met, actually, I met you through my wife who started working with you first and then and then you and I became uh, uh, more acquaintance with each other but the community service part so you believe you you uh, you said it yourself I you really took a hold of the community policing aspect like very early on in your in your career and and as I've gotten to know you that seems to like be a big huge um, part of your heart because you work with everybody. Like you, you have a big heart for, for the homeless and for the, just the local drunk or whatever, you wanna see them get better instead of just busting them. Um, is that something that just, just always kind of just been natural for you? And, and how's, that, how's that transition over the years? Well I, well, I think it goes back to a kid. As my dad was a city manager in a couple of different cities and he would just, you know, he was a single father. And so he was always having to haul us around to these community events and he, he would volunteer. He was a big Lions Club supporter. So yeah. we would do our community service. He would do his community service and we just tag along. Then when I became a Redwood City police officer, um, the police chief that hired me at the time was Chief Tony Gardino. And he was a community policing advocate. Mm -hmm. And then um, Chief Bolanos, now Sheriff Bolanos, was our chief back then. And he was a big proponent of community policing. So it was kind of the way the department was going at the time anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I think between my upbringing and the philosophy of the department, it just, it resonated with me. And, um, and I was good at it and I enjoyed it. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, really it's easy. This is, sounds harsh, but it's easy to arrest somebody. That's easy. Go out and arrest somebody and the problem solved for the minute, but go out and solve the long-term problem, whatever that is. If it's getting the uh, conflict resolution uh, people involved or communicating with the neighbors or getting to the root cause in a, in a neighborhood problem, or even if it's an individual, you know, a lot of the homeless folk, all, they all have a story. Mm -hmm. If you sit in here and take the time to listen to them and you could, I can't solve everything, but you can just hear their story and then you know where they're coming from. And then it puts a little more personality and face on them and, you know, you treat them different. Yeah, I've, I've, we've noticed that too, especially when you get to know somebody's yeah. heart. Mm -hmm. You realize that they're, they're stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they're not really a bad person. Mm -hmm. They're just actually stuck. And, and they, they're obviously making poor choices, which leads them down a bad road. But... They're really just right. and a human being that's stuck. Right. And they're stuck for, I can think of a half dozen people that just jump into my mind right now that um, had some type of childhood or adult traumatic event or events and not justifying it, but that segues into their uh, post-traumatic stress disorders and they, you know, they um, self-medicate with street drugs and alcohol. And then they, now you become a, a call for service. Right, and I'm right. saying it's right, but that that's one aspect of a, a root cause of something. Yeah, what what is something like you know? Because um, you and I both we we see a lot of stuff on on social media and stuff where people, you know, they 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 we've all seen the campsites grow mm -hmm. in Redwood City. It's 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 since COVID, it's been it's a huge epidemic. There's really little we can do about it at this point. But you know, um, like you said, I mean, San Mateo County is a huge seat. For services, I think I, I. You tell me if I'm wrong, but I think San Mateo County is probably the number one when it comes to providing services for for mental health and homeless and everything around here. Um, what do you say to folks that like when they say, "Hey, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about that with the homeless camps and stuff like that?" When you know as well as I do that everybody's out there, we're trying to do the best we can. Um, is there, you know, what do you think? Is there? A, there's no real. It's not like a light switch. It's not a solution that you can just fix right away. Well, no, there's no solution. There's, homeless has been a Redwood City since the day I got hired here. Um, there's some people I've been dealing with for 30 years, homeless people that I've been dealing with in my entire police career, and we just kind of have a, a friendly, professional relationship. But um, back to your point, I was going to, to answer your question with a, with a story. And the story is when I had uh, Street Life Ministries, as I volunteer at Street Life Ministries and I see people come through the food line, those are... People are homeless people or people with check to check people or living in their car. And um, those are not, I don't see a lot of those people in my police contacts, but they're mm. still homeless and there's, there's, we don't have contacts with them. Then there's a whole segment out there that we have of homeless that we have contacts with every day, mm. every day. And um, so it's, it's, there's two different types of people out there. And I would say the ones that the police have contacts every day, um, Substance abuse, mental health, homeless, um, probably criminal activity, probation or parole status. And um, there's no headway or there's, you know, there's no effort. It's just a revolving door for them. And I don't know how you solve that. If you hit them over the head with law enforcement and lock them up every time, if that's the trick, or if you give them a carrot yeah. and try and give them some type of rehab, that's street life ministries or social services, if that sticks. Yeah. Um, but there's no, as you say, there's no magic wand to any of it. It's um, And then Redwood City gets more than its fair share. You, show me a city in San Mateo County that has the social services. What city in San Mateo County has a Fair Oaks Community Center? Right. No. I, I can't think of anybody. Yeah. I mean, we have social workers on the city payroll. Right. And, and Redwood City Police and the Fair Oaks Community Center social workers work together constantly. We're always getting people temporary housing, long-term housing, return back to their house, maybe into a program. Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. But so I don't know if I answered your question, but I don't, I don't know what the cause is. No, you know, it's uh, there is no answer to it. It's just it is what it is. I mean, I know. I mean, I'm on Zoom calls with Eric and Terry and a bunch of people that are part of uh, Fair Oaks Community Center and the Redwood City Police and. Mm -hmm. And everybody is, you know, everybody's trying to do so much to try to r solve this problem. And it just, it, it's, it's hard. It's mm -hmm. like you never, everything's, every, every human being is different. Mm -hmm. So every situation becomes a different situation and it's hard. It's a, 
you're constantly like r- with, on the ground running, trying to figure out what's a, what's a good solution, you know? Yeah. Um, but I guess the other thing is too, is like you, you kind of hit on it too, is like you've been, you and Susan you're, um, have been a part of uh, Street Life Ministries for how many years? Well, you might correct me, but I want to say that I've been doing Street Life Ministries for about five years and maybe Susan's about four years, maybe as a couple, we've been doing it. Yeah, I was gonna say like six or seven. But okay. okay. Well, yeah, well, I know you've no, been. I know you've been a part of it for a long time. Well, I know I, Susan's came after. Yeah, I tried to ditch, tried to duck out on you, but you wouldn't let me. No, <laughs> you wouldn't let me duck out. <laughs> yeah, I know. I kind of. Yeah, I kind of can't put my foot in the door. Well, I keep buying you coffee. Well, that I think helps. if I buy you coffee, that works. But so, so well, let me ask you something. So, because of 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 volunteering. Like you come to Street Life Ministries, not Sergeant Dan. You come as Dan mm-hmm. and you know, you come as, as, uh, as, as, as boyfriend as Susan and, and you guys come as a couple and you serve. And like one of the things that we've noticed with you guys, you guys, you, you never come without a smile on your face, even if, we, you know, part of the year we've had to wear a mask or whatever, but you guys have always come down with a good attitude. You've always been willing to work. And, and how, how do you feel like the community service aspect of, of being at Street Life Ministries is, Benefited your life, and what do you think? How do you feel like it's added to anybody's life that's been a part of the ministry? Well, for me personally, um, if I was king, I think everybody should do. Every citizen in the community should do community service, and that's not court appointed. That's volunteer service. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's kind of a it's a two way street. Um, I get satisfaction uh, by providing volunteer community service, and I've been doing it my whole career. If it was city trees, planting trees, or working with the Sunrise Rotary Club, doing dictionaries at the schools, or whatever projects we did for the community. I just, the mayor's cleanup, I've done countless of those. Um, I just, I, it's kind of a two-way street. I get self-satisfaction of providing community service. Likewise, I think, um, yeah, I do like to be just Dan Smith when I do these things, but I, I get identified sometimes by people coming through the food line. And I think when they realize that, hey, that's a police officer, but he's in street clothes and he's serving food, um, it puts a face on the police. We're not just a uniform and a badge. We're like, our blood's the same color for everybody else's. We put our pants on the same like everybody else, and we're just regular folk. Mm-hmm. And I, so I think it just, and it continues. And then, and then back when I was on the street and volunteering at Street Life Ministries, I can't tell you how many contacts I had with folk as a police officer that recognized me from Street Life Ministries. And then right there, there's an icebreaker. It's it, even if it was a kind of a volatile situation or it was kind of a tense situation, in those cases, it was a um, it was an icebreaker. So, you know, they put a face on it. Hey, that's not just some cop with a badge. That's I kind of I know that guy. I talked to him and he, you know, served me hot food. Yeah, just the so, night before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just so, the night, yeah right. so I I I guess it's two ways. It's a give back to the community, but it's also for me it's it's self-satisfying. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we we enjoy having you guys come down there and stuff because it does. It's and I I agree with you. I think, you know, I like like when we have um the Road City Cadets come and and serve and stuff. It's it's nice to have people come down there and our community of folks get to see that there's there's a heart behind a uniform, right. and it's not just the uniform, you know. And well, I think it means a lot to our folks as well. Well, let's say what it is. Chief Mulholland's down there a couple times a month serving oh, yeah. food, and I bet most people don't even know that because he doesn't say anything. He just comes down, and he's another believer in community policing. Yeah, and he and he's he's local. He's he's from Redwood City. He's moved out of the area because that's where he could live. But he is a he's a true believer with community policing and. I guess yeah. even I, when I run into him down there, when I have, it just happens to be in the, the night I drive, he happens to be serving. It's, 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 it surprises me, but it really doesn't because that's his philosophy and his belief system. Yeah. And, and his, most, his yeah. wife, Shelly's, uh, she's kind of addicted to street life. Yeah. She, well, she serves a lot. Well, they're Redwood City folk. They're yeah. from here. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's cool when they call, they, last couple of years, they call us up, hey, we got, you're going to let us have Christmas. Mm-hmm. You know, they love coming and serving yeah. on Christmas. I, I, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. It's, it, their, their enthusiasm is, yeah. is terrific. So we come from the same school. We're <laughs> this, this is community policing. That, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, and that's awesome. It's a beautiful thing, actually. I think it's really cool. By the way, he also went to Berkeley, so maybe it's a Berkeley thing. So. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, I know. I had a somebody donated a, a Stanford jacket to me, and I not allowed. I was not allowed to wear it on the nights he served, and I wasn't allowed to wear it inside the Redwood City Police Department. That's right. And I agree, and don't wear it when I serve either. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gone. I, I donated it back out. Go Bears. I was like, was, there was no point in wearing it. Yeah. Go Bears. <laughs> Go Bears. So, um, anyway, but thank you. 
for for coming here and sharing sharing your thoughts and, and your heart and stuff. So, is there any last things that you'd like to share about? Um... Well, I, I'll, first of all, I'll say thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. um, so that's um, again, I told you it's it's self very satisfying for me, and I know um, Susan is it's 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 an accomplishment. You know, when you it's just we feel accomplished and satisfied to sir be part of a positive organization and i would tell anybody that asks um you know at first volunteerism is hard because you got to cut away the time and you got to make the commitment but once you've done it a couple times and you've got the time carved out and you kind of get past that oh i gotta go serve um it it is enjoyable yeah i've been, i've yet to have a bad encounter or a bad situation or a stressful situation Whenever I volunteer at Street Life Ministries, I've never, I enjoy it. We look forward to it. It's on my calendar. I'm ready. We're, we look forward to it. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right. Cheers. All right. <laughs>